Welcome to part two. Now, again, like I've said in all of these part part twos of videos or three, etc., etc. If you haven't seen the first part, watch it. If you don't care about it, then keep watching this video. But I do suggest that you watch the first part, especially the beginning, because there's an important message that you know, you should take into account before you comment saying, oh, where's this show? Where's that show? Okay. So with that being said, let's continue. Phineas and Ferb. There's so much good about this show. So much good. Now, this show was originally planned and pitched in like the early 90s to Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, and Nickelodeon and was turned down until years like almost 20 years later uh, like maybe 15 years later I mean it, it was a long time before it was pitched to Disney Channel and they were like yeah let's go with this so yeah Phineas and Ferb what's it about well it's about these two kids two stepbrothers Phineas and Ferb and well the show takes place in summer except for the Christmas special which was the only Phineas and Ferb episode to not take place in summer. <laughs> Excuse me. And, well, basically, they want to, you know, live, have summer, be very meaningful, do something great that you'll remember this summer for. And, well, they always come up with, you know, very cartoony inventions, which, well, well, um, are pretty neat. I will admit, I do like the roller coaster and everything else that came after it. And they do have, you know, their older sister, Candace, who tries to bust them, who's voiced by Ashley Tisdale. You know what? I think she should probably stick with voice acting. That's just my thoughts on it. And, well, there's also a subplot where their pet platypus, yes, they have a pet platypus, named Perry, who is also a secret agent named Agent P., he works for this place that's run by a guy named Major Monogram, and he's got his intern, Carl, and he stops this German scientist named Dr. Heinz Dufenschmartz. What? Patty the Platypus? And, well, he always he's defeats Dufenschmartz, and uh, the Perry subplot always connects to the main Phineas and Ferb subplot, like, you know, when they're building something, and... You know, they make something, they're entertaining people, and Candace is trying to bust them. Their mom never sees it, and their dad sees, some has seen shit they've done and, well, hasn't really done anything. It's kind of weird, but you know what? It's still entertaining, and I do like the songs in the show, especially, you know, the theme song and everything. It Just everything is good. The formula for it is a little repetitive, but there's still enough to make it a great show. There's the characters are still great, the voice acting's great, animation and the songs just everything else is great. And there's talks that there might be a theatrical movie for it. You know what? I should just pre-order tickets for it right now because I mean, I would I mean, when the trailers first come out and I would be so excited, and then when the movie comes out, I would be in the front of the line in a New York minute. That's how good this show is. Just like Lilo and Stitch, Aladdin is based off of the movie of the same name, and like Lilo and Stitch, it, well, picks off after the uh, direct-to-video sequel. In this case, it picks off after Return of Jafar. And, well, the show follows Aladdin, Jasmine, Abu, the Magic Carpet, the Genie, and uh, the Parrot Guy. Not, not a guy, just a parrot. And, well, it, it's entertaining and nice. I did like the Aladdin movie, and, well, I do like, you know, what the adventures that Aladdin and Jasmine have. And, just, it has the same kind of humor, it's... It's just great. Aladdin. Aladdin's a good Disney movie, and so is the show. And, you know, it even has the qualities from the movie 
the great qualities that are and are there they're also in the show. I I love this show. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. I loved this show as a kid, and I still love it now. Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. So, what's this show about? Well, it's about this dog named Brandy, who is, well, rich and a bit spoiled. Brandy Harrington of the Florida Harringtons. And this bunny rabbit named Mr. Whiskers, or Whiskers for short. They're on a plane going to various destinations. I think Whiskers is going to like jail or a pet place <laughs> while Brandy is going on vacation. And well, they fall out of the plane and end up in the Amazon forest. And they just, well, you know, decide to live life in the forest. And they do meet some nice friends like Lola and Ed, for instance. Uh, the humor, uh, there's some, there's minor gross humor, but it doesn't dominate the show. Whiskers is a little gross, although there is a little bit of a charm to him. I don't know why. He's just, every time I'm on, I, I, I love Whiskers, quite frankly. Brandy, Brandy matures as the show progresses, which is a good thing. And, well, it's just a funny and entertaining show, and I'm, I'm not happy that it was short-lived. I mean, really, only two seasons? Sheesh. And I thought Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon were killing shows prematurely. <sighs> Ugh. The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. What more can I say? It's Winnie the Pooh! There's... You know what? I think that needs no more explanation. It's fucking Winnie the Pooh. What's it about? If you don't know what Winnie the Pooh is about, who are you? But essentially, it's just, well, what the title implies. New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Basically, you know, new stories told in the Hundred Acre Wood of Pooh and his friends. And it's just entertaining. It's got all your characters. Pooh, Rabbit, Eeyore, Piglet, Tigger, Christopher Robin, Owl, Kanga, Roo, Gopher. Yeah. It's just... It, it, it's fucking Winnie the Pooh. There's, there's nothing that can go wrong. Alright, let's talk about this show quickly because when you start talking about the show, you start to remember the theme song and it's catchy, although it will never leave your head. I am dead fucking serious. But anyway, Kim Possible. What's this about? Well, it's about this girl named Kim. She is, well, well, a secret agent. She goes on to, you know, you know, protect her town against different villains, mostly this guy named Dr. Draken, as well as a bunch of other certain villains. And, well, basically, she can do anything. I mean, her last name is Possible, and there's her sidekick, Ron Stoppable, who can't do shit. Although, Ron is, isn't completely useless, and he's even got a pet named Rufus, who is a naked mole rat, who, sure, why not? I always like this show, the action is great, the humor is great, and even the characters are great. Like I said, Ron's not just there to be like modern Patrick, just to be an idiot, just to have an idiot, he actually serves some sort of purpose. This was a great show, definitely check it out, although, remember what I said about the theme song. Before the Transformers movies, Shia LaBeouf was known for two things, Holes and Even Stevens. This show is, well, um, it focuses around this family named the Stevens, who live in California, of course, although the show mostly focuses around two of the kids, Lewis and Wren. And, well, Shia LaBeouf is Lewis. I can't remember who played... Oh, 
Christy Carlson Romano, who is also Kim Possible. Oh shit, now the theme song's on my head. See? Yeah, the theme song it that theme song is catchy. And well, the humor is great. It doesn't have a laugh track, which is great. And you know, there's another character I also like in the show is Beans. He was pretty entertaining, and there was even a Disney Channel movie for Even Stevens, which was great. The humor was fantastic, characters great. And just, I, I, I don't know what else to say other than great. Probably my favorite episode of the show, I'm thinking of it right now, was the Halloween special. Where Ren possesses everyone. <laughs> oh, jeez. Brings back so many memories. If you've seen my best Cartoon Network shows list, you would probably know that... I am a big fan of Craig McCracken, and, well, this is his latest show, and is it great? Well, made it on its list, so, duh. So, Wander Over Yonder, what's it about? Well, it's about this guy named Wander who uh, travels around with his, um, I, I don't know, horse? some alien horse named Sylvia across the universe to different places where you know they have little adventures and whatnot and at times have to stop the evil Lord Hater and his second-in-command Peepers. Peepers is also voiced by Tom Kenny and looks like a zombat with legs and Lord Hater um, I swear first thing I thought of when I saw him I was like Skeletor? Seriously. But, you know, it's got the Craig McCracken humor and writing, which is always top-notch. And hey, Lauren Faust is also the co-producer and story editor for this, so you know it can't go wrong. I mean, they get everything right 99% of the time. Yeah, everything, yeah, sounds like 60% of the time it works every time. Yeah, I basically just said that. But, I mean, and they travel around the universe by blowing bubbles and going in them, which, you know, makes sense since can't breathe in space. Although, you know, other series have had, you know, characters be able to breathe in space, although this universe establishes that you can't. It's entertaining. It's like a universal, it's like a space version of Adventure Time, but... I, uh, but it's so much different that, well, it's just great. Wander Over Yonder, great, great, great. Craig McCracken, you rock. You, you rock. And your wife. Your wife is awesome, too. Dave the Barbarian, a great show that, sadly, only lasted a season. You know, it's sad. This it's really sad. Now, what's it about? Well, it's about this guy named Dave, who's a barbarian, but he's kind of wimpy, and he's got a talking sword named Lula and a fat dragon pet named Faffy. Oh, and he's got family members. Fang, who's a chimp, not a monkey. Candy, who, while their parents are away, is basically in charge, and his uncle Oswidge, who is a wizard guy. There's also the narrator who does interact with them. This is a very silly show that breaks the fourth wall, and it works, quite frankly. Um, yeah, it's just a very silly show, and it works. It's grounded in its own reality, and just, it's, it's great. In terms of villains, really the main one is Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Piggy. And the only other one I can think of was, is Ned Frischman. Uh, yeah, it's hilarious, quite frankly. The animation is great, and just, I would really love to see a reboot of this. Come on, Disney, please, please, and don't make it crap. Please, reboot Dave the Barbarian.
just like Young Justice, Gargoyles was a show created by Greg Weissman that was unfortunately short-lived. So, Gargoyles. It's probably one of the darkest Disney franchises overall. I mean, Disney isn't really known for being dark. And, well, when they're dark, they are pretty dark and entertaining. And Gargoyles fits that bill. So, what's this about? Well, well, it starts off that, well, there's these gargoyles that are in Scotland. I don't know why I say that when I say Scotland, but, yeah, they're, they're in Scotland. And then, well, well, they turn to stone. They turn to stone during the day, but they wake up when the sun goes down and it's night. And, well, the group of gargoyles is led by this guy called Goliath, who is voiced by Keith David and is also known for being the voice for Spawn. And he has an awesome voice. So, yeah, they're first in Scotland, and then a millennium later, they are in New York City. And, well, they have to adjust to, well, 1994, and they, with the help of someone named Eliza, who is a detective. And, well, they have to, they fight this, uh, villain named Zenados. And, well, quite frankly, it's just entertaining. It's action, great, with great animation, and I would really like to see a reboot of this. Or, hell, a, not, not live action movie, but a movie of this. Gargoyles was an entertaining show with great dialogue, great characters, and was just great. Yeah, I would really like to see this. Gargoyles, it's great. But, you know, what could be Gargoyles? What is the one show that has been able to top all of these? Well, you know, you probably know already, so... Yeah, it's Gravity Falls. This, in my opinion, is the best Disney Channel show of all time. Why is it so good? Why is it my favorite? Well, let's see. Well, it's about these twins named Dipper and Mabel, and they go to this place called this town called Gravity Falls to live with their Grunkle Stan for the summer. And, well, mysterious things happen in Gravity Falls. Also, the name of the town, get it? Gravity Falls. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. But, um, I gotta say, just the writing is top notch. Some of the best. The characters are great. Other than Dipper, Mabel, and Stan, there's also Seuss and Wendy, and Waddles, who's a pig. And, well, the stories are very interesting, they're very engaging, and, well, you know, usually there are twists that are nice. And it's, it's just, it's a masterpiece. I'm, I'm glad that season two is happening for it. I hope this show has a nice long run, and long live Gravity Falls. So yeah, that is my review. No, wait, no, not a review. That was my countdown. And well, coming up, I've got some Transformers stuff to do. Yeah, I got Rat Trap Tankor somewhere back there, and also some Creons. And also, stay tuned for the top 20 worst Disney Channel shows. I've got it. I'm not showing the reverse side because, well, that would spoil stuff. I mean, here's the best side with a bunch of stuff, and I'm not showing the other side. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, share, all that, all that amazing stuff, and I hope to see you all later. See ya.